So root for the Lakers to have no shooting, for Levine to be healthy, and then maybe whip up some photoshops of Zach in, in the Lakers jerseys. Yeah, like a new big three where it's LeBron, <laughs> Bronny, and Zach. <laughs> Okay, perfect. All right, hey, before we get into it, we want to talk about the uh, great tasting, less filling Miller Lite from defending your favorite team after a bad loss to obsessively checking your fantasy lineups. Football fandom is bigger than just Sundays. Miller Lite knows the passion that comes with rooting for your team. Like the debate that sparked in 1975, great taste versus less filling. So what is the best thing about the original light beer? Let it be both. Miller Lite keeps it simple. Undebatable quality, great taste, only 96 calories. This is a beer that strips away everything you don't need and holds on to what matters most. The original light beer since 1975. You went uh I was going to say, weekend. I got a new favorite Miller Lite time. Oh, yeah? The, the post-hunt Miller Lite, and it was hot. I've never hunted when it was hot before. So we came in. I did I did get a deer, dragged it back in. I was all like sweaty and tired, and, and it was nighttime, and I come inside and there's a nice cold Miller Lite waiting for me. What a treat from the Wells family. Bottle or can? Can. Can. That, that just hits different, Yep, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm, I don't was, know personally, but I'm sure. It was great. Yeah. It really hit the spot. It was, like I, it was like I earned it. There you go. Yeah. So make your uh, game time taste like Miller time. Taste great, less filling. Let it be both. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com slash midshow, or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Just make sure you celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories per 12 ounces. Fewer cals and carbs and premium regular beer. All right, Ben Bang, welcome to the stretch. Uh, it is myself, Chief, Big Cat, White Sox Dave is out because he has the flu. Damn. Yeah. I think I saw Chief sniffling too, just so you know. Nah, I, Don't I, say I, that. <laughs> I, I I said that to you when you told me that... <laughs> The day by uh, the flu, I was like, check with Chief to make sure he doesn't. I can't get sick. Do you I'm, understand? No, I know. It's what are you, football season. Something? If I get sick, <laughs> it's a problem. No, nah, I'm good. Which week do you lose your voice? Uh, it's usually sometime uh, like early December. It's like it will be if I if I go somewhere and have to yell a little bit and then get a little bit of sick. And then, yeah, I just – and then I lose my voice and I can't get it back because I have to do the shows, so I just keep losing it. Um, trying not to have it, have it happen this year. Okay. I will not contribute to that because I am not sick. Usually once a year, though, yeah. lose my voice, and then everyone's like, this is nails on a chalkboard listening to this. I'm like, dude, I fucking know. It's... We got to get Pete to have like an AI voice over. The only thing I'll say is that I, I've i never lost my voice because I was partying too hard. <laughs> Like it's not it's not a situation where it's like on Friday yeah. comes around and I'm like I'm gonna go get fucked up for 48 hours. It's like I just get sick and I don't sleep in the fall and then I lose my voice and, and I just, try hard to get it back and it doesn't come back right away. You've just simply said too many words months prior and then it leads into that. right, yeah. right. You're, you have to put yourself on a word pitch count. Yeah, yeah. Or like I'll be singing. I don't know. Maybe it's like if I go to a concert. No, but not. I don't even go to concerts. I don't you even know. Are what you happens. a guy who sings at concerts? No, I don't even know. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna be surprised. I don't know were. when the last. Yeah, the last time I lost my voice, I think it was just being sick. That's really all. Okay. It is. Well, well, I'm glad we barred WSD from the office. Though. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe we get ahead of it though. Can like late November? Can we hire like a voice coach that knows how to like? I have all like the drops and stuff when I feel it going. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's really just it's more like I can tell you the I'll tell you the week that I'm gonna lose it, and then it's like all right now go on advisors and scream. <laughs> yeah. and then i i like put everything i have into advisors and then i'm yeah. it's I'm you just, just can't try to keep up with yeah. Stu. yeah i can't yeah. i can't talk yeah. maybe the yeah. kids get a little get away with a little more that week so you yeah know, that would yeah. be good uh but anyway it's bye week obviously still a lot to talk about bears four and two playing the commanders Jaden daniels status is at what at this point i don't know uh we lost the bye week by the way huh yeah, yeah. Lions and Our Panthers. division's so fucking good. Yeah. We lost the bye week. I, I'm I sorry. We, we did. I think we knew how good it was. We knew. I was kind of hoping the Packers would take care of business at home against a team that we lost to. Yeah, we knew. Or wouldn't. Or wouldn't. Right? Yeah, yeah, we knew. Yeah. We knew. It would have been nice if the Packers lost. It would have been nice if, uh, like, the Lions. I would have been okay if the Lions kicked the shit out of the Vikings because then I could have convinced myself the Vikings are somewhat fraudulent. That game was so back and forth that I'm just – I'm I'm a realist. I'm a realist. We are we are the fourth best team in our division. Hopefully, we can play well down the stretch and not be the you know and be better than the fourth best team. But right now, if you had to rank them, just taking all bias aside, we're the fourth best team because our division's that fucking good. It's not like we're a bad team. We're just in. 
I mean, the 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 Lions and the Packers, the Lions, Packers, and Vikings are they they're one, two, three in the NFC. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, and where are the Bears? Like six or seven? Yeah, I mean, we're yeah, yeah we're I think we're in a playoff spot. Seven, right now. yeah, yeah, seven. seven. So, so it's it's not that we're four, bad. Yeah, all four teams can make it. Yeah, we yeah. just lost the bye week. I I, yeah. I hate to say it, but we lost the bye week. Well, I made that analogy last week about Stone Cold, The Rock, Undertaker, and Kane. I saw a graphic just honestly coincidentally, and I tweeted the NFC North, and people were weighing in. They're like, "Who, which one are the Bears? And most people said we're Kane, yeah. which is true. Like yeah. you said, the fourth best team, Kane. Sorry, Chief, I know you don't know. A lot of people out there might know about these guys. Though. I don't think yeah, yeah. does. It, Kane was always a beast. He was always a force to be reckoned with, but he was never a guy. He who never was, was the top of the line star. Yes. Um. Yeah, but Kane was awesome. Yes. So I think I'm okay with being Kane. Yeah, I'm okay with being Kane. I just, it would have been nice. It would have been nice to see the other teams. Like I said, it would have been nice to see a decisive victory one way or the other for the Lions. Like, if the Lions and Vikings had played and the Lions' uh, defense was just a shell of itself without Agent Hutchinson, been like, okay, this is this gives us a chance. If the Packers had lost to the Texans, but okay, this gives us Everyone just looks so good. Yeah. Everyone they looks they so did good. kind of struggle to get to the passer. Uh yeah, they were blitzing a lot. Yeah, they blitzed Sam Darnold a lot. Um, but I just the Lions' offense is so fucking good. You have to play perfect football against them to stop them for four quarters. They have they just have weapons everywhere. Everywhere, yeah, Jameer, everywhere. Jameer Gibbs is so good. I mean, think about it. That was a close game, but w the Vikings got a what a fumble touchdown, and the Lions also went for it on a fake punt, and the Vikings scored right away. So there was. I mean, if if you just play, if the Lions play straight up and don't turn the ball over, I don't know who can beat them. Yeah, that's kind of what it comes down to. Yeah, I guess I was, and I know you were. It's not like you weren't high on them before, but I'm not deterred. I because I really was buying into the Vikings already. So yeah, kind of. I kind of. Yeah. All right, so yeah, we lost the bye week. I'm just being honest. I'm do. I I really like. I think this maybe just comes with the fact that Caleb Williams is in our life, and I feel so confident about him going forward that I I just feel like I can be a lot more honest about where the state of the bears because i feel like the future is so bright mm -hmm. yeah so it's i don't have to like yourself. convince myself yeah. that something is that that this season is something it's not this season is if we get to the playoffs that'd be incredible if we don't get to the playoffs i'm not going to be like oh my god they failed what the fuck this is a no, foundation year yeah yeah it's good we're pouring we're concrete. this type of co competition yeah yeah i don't want it to happen god forbid we go zero and six in the division it's still not a situation where the sky is falling. No. That's it. That's oh, oh and six. Oh and six pretty, would be bad. Pretty, it would yeah. suck. <laughs> it would suck. Yeah. But uh, the sky would be falling a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you'd hope they have low six. cloud cover. Not all losses are created equal, though. That's true. Yeah, so I'm I, assuming that they're like some tough battle losses. I still think that they can they can compete with all those teams too. I don't think they're miles better than the Bears. Like on their day, the Bears can get any one of those teams. Honestly, and this is gonna sound crazy. But now that Russell Wilson's starting for the Steelers, would it be so nuts to bring to trade back for Justin Fields <laughs> just to play against the Lions? Oh, true, yeah. true. Just play the first yeah. three quarters against the Lions. Yeah. He would always give the Lions fits. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He'd rack up like what was that two years ago? He had like what, 160 yards rushing. Play the first game. three quarters yeah. against the Lions. Caleb comes in, in the fourth quarter. We win that game. He's breaking off the uh, yeah. turkey leg on Thanksgiving. Just saying. I not, could not see it now. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, of course, 0-6 uh, is bad. Maybe I retract that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, retract it. I retract it. Okay. But in my head, I was also assuming that those would be hard-fought ones. And, and not to mention, the 49ers are falling apart. Yeah. yeah. 49ers are a problem. Yeah. They, they have so many injuries. We talk about the back half. They're falling apart. Yeah. That's true. And Jaden Daniels might not. I hope he plays. Have we seen anything? I haven't seen anything today. I'll be so bummed out if he doesn't play. I know. I want him to play too. Yeah. I was just like refreshing PFTs. Yeah. Twitter. Yeah. It, it would it would be very, very upsetting if he doesn't play in this game. I, I saw his that mom it's... tweeted that he was fine. Yeah. That was a rib injury. Okay. It's the last I saw. It's a weird game. They're more battle tested than us. But not really. In in a sense of they've beat and they've they played team. They've lost to the Bucks and they've lost to the Ravens. Yep. So well, I mean, we lost to the Texans. Yes, uh, the Colts obviously is not a great loss. Yes, uh, but the Texans are a very good team, uh, and they've the Commanders have beaten some not great defenses. I mean, the Bengals' defense was like an absolute sieve uh, when they played them. They beat the Panthers. Who else did they beat? They beat, they beat the, the Browns. Mm -hmm. So I, 
I think it will be very interesting to see like which team you know because I think I think both teams you could make the argument how you look at it like they have done their business by beating the teams that are inferior. Mm -hmm. We're on a similar level. Let's go win this game. They beat the Giants. I guess more so. I'm more impressed with how their defense is. Yeah, yeah. it's looked a lot better. Yeah, it's looked a lot better. Dan Quinn's a good coach. Yeah, yeah, it's a good defensive coach. They looked all bad like early on. Yeah, and, you know they obviously. You're not winning an award for shutting down the Panthers or the Browns, but well, and that's the thing with this game is let's say Jaden Daniels uh, starts, it's not Caleb Williams against Jaden Daniels. It, it's our defense has to find a way to stop him, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's that's going to be the name of the game. Like if we can hold, if we can do what we've done in the last twelve games and hold them to twenty one or under, I think we've got a good shot in this one. Yeah, yeah. Terry McLaurin. I love oh, that he's guy. Free. Yeah, I yeah. think he's yeah, awesome. Yeah, he's awesome. And, and Brian Robinson's a great runner. Yeah, he, he runs hard. He runs yeah. upright and hard right through everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a different um, type of commanders team. Yeah, yeah, obviously. absolutely. I guess I wanted to get into as well. Now that we're a quarter of the way, yeah, through the season. Yeah, do you guys have an MVP right now for the Bears? <sighs> I could start if you guys want Go me ahead. to think. I was gonna say Jalen Johnson. Okay. I like I, that. he's just been I, I think you when you get a cornerback at that level, uh you almost forget that he exists because that's what he does. Yeah, they don't even throw at him really. Right. They yeah. they he he eliminates so much, so he might not have the stats, but he's so important to everything, how everything works, that he might be my MVP. I, I'm totally fine with that. I think there are Anyone in the backfield, well, I guess just him, Gordon, or uh, Brisker, will be a candidate yep. to be selected mm -hmm. for this. But I'm going to go up front. I, I'm going to give it to Dexter. It was, yeah. It's kind of a coin flip between him and Sweat because Sweat obviously commands more of the double teams. Yep. But Dexter's leading the team in sacks right now. He's got four. And if he didn't step up and take that next leap that we needed him to, I don't know where this defense is. Yeah. Yeah. Billings, too. Yeah, I mean, Billings. I, I, someone needs to do the stat. Someone smarter than me, like what our rush defense is when he's on and off the field. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, yeah, no, Dexter's a good call. Yeah, like both those guys had to swallow uh, have to swallow up a lot more double teams to make Dexter the guy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he has answered the bell. Yeah, to be what you needed him to. be. I'd agree. And so yeah. I was between him and Sweat, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Dexter just because he came out of left field. I can't believe I'm saying that. I almost just want to give it to Eberflus. <laughs> because like that defense they're they keep getting the ball like turning yeah. all over there was so much there's a lot of chaos around this team the quarterback the attention the hard knocks everything very bad start to the year and he continually kind of circles the wagons and gets yeah. things going he did it last year too he's done it this year i'm not the biggest fan but i don't think there's an individual player that is like the clear mvp at this point but the team, the whole team, all 53, all three units are playing well. So you have to give credit to one guy. It'd be him. Yeah. I mean, I think it has to be defensive. So yeah. turn. Yeah. I think the uh, last three weeks has been. Yeah. No, but yeah. you can't say the all six games, the offense. No, I know. Yeah. Like, because you would, I mean, maybe DJ Moore, but that was, you know, but didn't he's, start off great. Yeah. DeAndre Swift didn't start off great. He's been great the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. I would say, yeah, it would be. DJ, if you were going to go with an offensive guy. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Yeah, yeah, like Keenan hasn't played enough. Yes. Cole, Cole. Cole wasn't used enough. Mm -hmm. to start the yeah, season. the first, I think he was under 50% of the snaps. The first right. Week, like if so. Cole had been used the way he's been used the last yeah. three weeks, he would definitely be the MVP. Yeah, mm -hmm. so check out that interview we dropped with him on Friday. Yes. Too. He was yes. great. Yeah. He's the man. Yes, he was awesome. And then I guess to do the opposite of that, I don't want to say LVP, but who's a guy that you've been most disappointed with so far this year? I could start again too if you get. Yeah, to. why don't you? I start? I have one that popped okay. in my head. I love it. I would say uh, probably either Darnell Wright or Tevin Jenkins. Not that they've Darnell Wright's been up and down, but there's been he needs to be the rock. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he can't. We don't have enough talent on the offensive line for Darnell Wright to have a bad game. They they drafted him to be an All Pro. Right, yeah. and he's he, he hasn't been bad. He's had bad games. Uh, and then Tevin Jenkins also kind of the same way, but he's also they've they've had good games too. So, yes. but you just those two guys need to elevate everyone else. So Darnell is who I had. Yeah, okay. Darnell Wright last year had seven penalties the whole year. He had he gave up seven sacks. He already has four and four in both right. those categories. Right, and you need him to be elite, and yeah. that, that's maybe a little unfair because you're basically like. 
he isn't the problem with the offensive line, but he also he has to play at a level that makes everyone else better. Yeah, I mean, he's a top 10 pick. Yeah. He needed yeah. to be a cast iron pan. We had to get him and, like, not think about it again. Yeah. You know? Like, if that's something we really needed for this offense. Yeah. Line, yeah. And it hasn't been that way six games in. And I know it's a new system. Mm -hmm. And uh, the right guard position next to him has been a carousel. Yeah. yeah. But still, I can't help but be a little disappointed. Underwhelmed. Actually, underwhelmed. Yeah, underwhelmed. Yeah. 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 I mean, you, the other one would be Vilas Jones, but they've kind of put him away yeah i forgot uh, he existed yeah i know God. which is good yeah, yeah we need to keep that, that kick off that way. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. Right. yeah 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 do you have one chief yeah i think Ryder shelton shelton you know he was brought in as a veteran center to kind of stabilize that position he was definitely rocky to start it feels like he's gotten a little bit better the last few weeks too but i i really don't have one yeah 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 it's, again it's not um it's not like shitting on Darnell Wright, it's just more that the he unfortunately has to play his standard has is higher than everyone else. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Is, and he has not played to that high standard. And he, all he's game. still only twenty two, right? Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. I yeah, mean, I'm sure he's got time. It's asking a lot, but yeah. those are the expectations you get totally. set upon yeah. you. Yeah, you, yep. you're drafted where you're drafted. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Bears wise, besides that, uh, I'm kind of looking at this as a three game stretch. Yeah. Right. Got you. Got to go two and one. Yes, yeah. have to go, go two, two and, and one. one. Have to go two. I mean, we said it before this five game stretch. Four and one has to happen. Like three and two, we can kind of figure it out. But four and one is really what we needed to land on. Mm -hmm. So, and this one is, if you can win on Sunday, then you can have the hiccup game, which you hope you don't have. But that would be winning yeah. against the Commanders would be so so massive. It would. And are are the Patriots at a point where they're like trying to lose? They're just bad. Oh, they're, they're just that terrible. bad. Yeah, I mean that one. I'm not the Cardinals. I, I I'm I'm not going to rule out the Cardinals. No, not at problem. all. No. Yeah, they're like because Kyler can. They can. They right. have. Yeah, and he did well against us last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a weird factor of going there, and yep. he could just have an unbelievable game. Yep, yep. So yeah, yeah. Sunday's going to be a big, big game. It's a yeah. massive game. Yeah. So it's got to be two and one. But yep. obviously, you go three and zero, oh, and then. Well, now, 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 if you go three and zero in these next three, uh, and you're seven and two, now you're talking about it's almost like hard to miss the playoffs at that point. Yeah, you're talking about you can you can afford going uh, what three and three and five down the stretch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and still be a playoff team. So uh, it feels like all three of us expect them to go two and one. I would say two and one. I don't know which one it's going to be though. What would you? I guess? think I, where three do we and zero is more likely than one and two. I actually think it's just it literally is if we win the, the commanders. commanders game we'll lose the Cardinals game if we lose the uh, Commanders game we'll win the Cardinals game. Probably one of those. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think I think we'll beat the Patriots. Yeah. I do as well. Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. agree with that though? Or do you think three and zero is more likely than one and two? I'm gonna knock on wood. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. Yeah. I would say that feels more likely than one and two. Now, it does feel like we're catching the Commanders at a great time, Jaden Daniels aside. Yeah. You know, you're coming off of absolutely shit-pumping the Panthers, mm -hmm. which yep. obviously didn't affect us last week. No. Right. But regardless, it does feel like... Yeah, they're they're high. They're flying high. Yeah, yeah. Jaden Daniels, we'll see what what happens with him. If he can't... I'll tell you what, if he, if he is... If he plays with a rib injury and is under, you know, orders to not run... I like our chances a lot. Yeah, more. that's a good I, point. I do think that our defense is going to be able to do a good job with the short passing game and get to the ball, but his ability to run changes everything. Well, that's such a huge part of their offense. Yeah. Because it gives you a different look, those read options, the RPOs, and, it's, it's and that's all off those, the table. Yeah, it's all those third downs that he just is able to extend the play yep. and make incredible throws or make plays with his feet. Like, he's he's such a weapon in, in, in third downs any distance yeah uh twitter so, yeah. doctors are saying one to two weeks okay so it's possible he, he plays play. yeah i i can't see him playing him though right why why would you do it because pmt needs it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. seriously i was told pft yeah. i was like you have to like i don't know who say you something know there yeah. but like you have to it's all been building to this it's gotta happen yeah 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 it's all been building we need it yeah we need it. they flex it to the afternoon we need it yeah but pmt aside it is hard to see yeah you guys will be in the gambling cave. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. we'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there. You got back up. Yeah, yeah. Um, damn, uh, I hope he does too, because that would be a shame. I think everyone was circling this. Oh, everyone wants it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Weeks, so yeah, I don't really want it, but I want it. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't want the narrative that's going to come out of it if if Kale plays bad and Jaden plays well, but I still want it because that's what sports are. You got to fucking yeah. go up against the guys and th- that you're in the conversation with and, and see how you measure up. I, I, it's, but I love looking at the AFC when it's like Mahomes and Allen and Burrow. Like, I want yeah. some of that in the NFC, too, and it would be great to be. I know. The AFC sucks, though, now. Yeah. yeah. Through through it, bad. there's seven yeah. teams that just straight up suck. Yeah, I yeah. saw that. I yeah. saw that clip you had. Yeah, it's 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 shocking when you go through it and you're like, holy fuck, they actually just suck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a bad, it's a yeah. bad conference at this point. Yeah, salary cap gets every comes for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, very top heavy, but yeah. yeah, still. But even the Chiefs don't look like they're undefeated, but they don't look. Their defense is nasty. Yeah, I I think that we we just assume Mahomes. There's something about like having a great quarterback. You just assume they can't also have a great defense. But they do. Just, their defense is yeah. so nasty. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else Bears wise before we turn the no, page? I no. missed them. Yeah, I, I genuinely was like, I want to see Caleb. I felt left out this weekend. Yeah, I don't think I love the early buy either. By the way, no, I asked Cole that. He was yeah. like, No, this kind of sucks. You yeah. want it, you want a little later? Oh, yeah. so he was a little non-committal with us. He said he will tell us at the end of the year how we feel. Okay, yeah, yeah. but I was like, realistically, you'd want it to be like week nine or ten. I mean, right in the middle would be perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, I also yep. don't understand how they're doing buys now because this upcoming week there's no buys, which makes no sense. That why didn't you just start the buys a week later? This week, yeah, no, just start them a, like I, think I wonder the if first was... buy was week five. Like start the first buys week six. Everyone coming back from London? Do they? Yeah, the auto? Jags didn't take a buy. I don't yeah, know, but they stayed there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so but usually. Oh, but they don't have back. one coming back. No. no. Oh, that's crazy. there's no buy weeks. <laughs> the league doesn't give a fuck about no. the Jags. No, no it's yeah. all yeah. yeah the way they figure it out. It's yeah, all. yeah. Who's playing the uh, Germany game this week? No, that's in oh. two weeks. It's Panthers Giants. Whew. That should be fun. Yeah. Whew. That should be real fun. Yeah. Right? Hey, let's take a break here because we're going to talk about Beard Guys. Step up your beard game and unleash your beast with Beard Guys. Hair on your face is different from hair on your body. Specific products are needed. Beard Guys is products that wash, hydrate, and help to style your beard. Start your day off right with two-in-one wash and tame, a wash and conditioner combo that is meant to cleanse and condition your beard. It's citrus scent. And uh, everyone loves citrus scent. So hydrate that beard with some beard oil as well. The beard oil helps soften and moisturize your skin, your beard and skin. Lock in that beard with some matte style and clay. The product is kale and clay, so it helps keep your beard in place and can be used for your hair as well. Uh, I, I had a thought. What's that? There's something about citrus in the winter, like that citrus scent, because you just don't get it naturally. Mm-hmm. In the summer, like there are people are having lemonades and there's flowers and like you get that, you get that scent. Yep. You don't get it this time of year. You and you're not going to get it naturally for another six months. So when you are able to freshen up with beard guys with that citrus scent, it is going to drive those ladies crazy. Oh, they're going to they're going to love it. A little uh, yeah, little chief tip. Mm-hmm. Uh, so whether you're a seasoned vet or a rookie beginning the bearder journey, Beard Guys is the brand for your beard. Uh, you could find Beard Guys at your local Walmart and Walgreens. But yeah. That's that's the bye week, uh, you know. Yeah, it was, it was enjoyable. I we lost was the bye. Yeah. yeah, lost the bye. <laughs> it's, it's sad. I, I I didn't want to say we lost the bye. <laughs> um, should we turn the page to the Chicago Bulls? Sure. All right. Uh, so the Bulls were uh, thirty nine and forty three last year. They uh, made the play in game. Obviously, their over under uh, is twenty eight and a half. Mm hmm. Lost DeMar DeRozan, lost Alex Caruso. Uh, we uh, gained Josh Giddy, mm-hmm. who is the most notable. And Lonzo. Yes. yes. And Lonzo. And Lonzo. Yeah. Correct. Uh, so my big picture thought on the Bulls is this. Uh, I will not take the Bulls seriously this year. I will not be fooled by any early season success if there is any. You will uh, not watch them on TV. I will not watch them on TV. That's not my choice. Uh, until they trade Zach Levine. Yeah. And preferably Vooch as well, which that might be trickier. But you have to do it. It's They are stuck in such a stupid spot right now where they actually do have some young guys that could end up being decent players. Yeah. But you have a guy in Zach Levine who you're paying a ton of money to that wants the offense to go through him, so you're going to stunt the growth of everyone else. Just Zach Levine looks healthy. Play him to start the season. Trade him. That's yeah. it. I know that we're going to end up having to give up assets, but I think – you would rather do that and start an actual rebuild with some of these young guys than the alternative, which is the Jerry Reinsdorf special. Zach Levine plays well. He stunts the growth of everyone else, 
and they win 38 games and lose in, as the 10th seed. Yeah. That's it. They they ha- it seems like the Lakers are the team that's always connected to him. I do I love how he's just lying through his teeth. Though. Yeah, oh You've yeah. Seen his comments being like whatever the coach needs and what I'll take whatever role. It's like, dude, no. shut <laughs> up. You've no. been a cancer for years. Yeah. For years. And it's it's unfortunate that I think the problem I think the Bulls are going to like you're, it's going to end up coming down to Michael Reinsdorf's going to be like I don't want to also trade assets away with yeah. Zach Levine, but that's just you did it. You did it to yourself. You signed him to a deal that makes no sense for his caliber of player and uh you it, unless you do that, I, I can't take them seriously. I can't get excited. I can get excited about a youth movement, mm-hmm. about trying to build something with some of these guys. I can't get excited about watching Zach Levine play hero ball and uh, and stunting the growth of everyone else. And, like, I can and get he'll excited. do it effectively. Like, yeah, no, he'll, that's he'll the, get not, 40, yeah. and then they'll win more games than they than you want them to. He's still he's a good basketball player. Right. He's just not he, – he, he does not work with what the Bulls should be trying to do but as always with the Bulls, what they should be trying to do is never what they actually are doing. Well, that's a problem, too, is I think they'll essentially have to play blindfolded to not make this playing game again because the Wizards are horrible. Yeah. The Pistons are bad. Yeah. Now, these teams may take a jump. Uh, I could be wrong. Maybe the Pistons. The Wizards will. Maybe. Yeah. The, the Raptors are no, bad. The Bulls need to be bottom five, and they need to win the but lottery and get Cooper Fly. Bottom five is not. And I'm missing another team who's really bad. Bottom five is right, right at. at the 10th seed. That's the problem with the expanded playoffs. Oh, yeah. There's 15 true. teams. Yeah. yeah. The Nets are really bad. The Nets. Yeah. yeah. The That's Nets are. The Nets are. And yeah. we lose our pick. I think I think we have a top 10 protected top, against the Spurs. So if we, if we aren't in the top 10, we're going <laughs> to give up our pick. <laughs> yeah. They better be in the top 10. They better, They need to be number one. Like, that's the only. Like, they have to have Cooper flag. Otherwise, what do we. What do we not, do? not to revert it back to the Bears, but quickly, because I forgot to say this. I saw someone. It was an angry Jets fan. It might have been Tom Lay. Tweet the Tankathon graphic. It's been fucking amazing. Oh, yeah. Not having to look at that. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. The draft yeah, talk here reminded me of that. Yeah. It's been awesome not having to go Agreed. Yep. Agreed. But uh, you're right. We need Cooper Flag. Yeah. We need to be in the cellar desperately. I also just, like, this team is not going to be able to defend at all. No, but that, that part I guess I'm a little excited about because it does seem from everything I've read and uh, – Again, we can't watch the games uh, here in Chicago, which is crazy. Uh, the preseason game as well, like they're going to run mm-hmm. and they're going to try to score a lot and they're not going to play defense, which if you're going to be bad, that is a be fun, fun. Yeah, that's a fun way to be bad. Uh, but again, it just all comes back to like if if you don't trade Zach Levine this season, it's a colossal failure of a season. I am excited to watch Giddy, though. Yeah, like that is a youth movement type of type yeah. of play that they made that. Yeah, is interesting. Yeah, and he's a good basketball player. He can't shoot, which is important in basketball, but yeah. um he can facilitate and yeah, well it, you you're basically taking a shot on a 21-year-old kid who could could end up being very good. It was honestly a great trade for Yeah. Side. I think they won that trade. Yeah. Yeah. The Bulls? Yeah. Yeah, and I mean the Thunder, they're so loaded. Yeah. Caruso's going to It makes sense right. for them too. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Can I can I put you on the spot for a second yeah. though? I want to if you want to, you don't have to. Okay. But one of my favorite basketball personalities is Russillo. Yeah. Can you call him and ask him just to give 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 just to give us like, just tell us what will be exciting about the Bulls? Just like two minutes. Okay. Sorry, was that bad on the spot? No, no, you're fine. It's your friend, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just I love how <laughs> how negative he could be about something. No, he's gonna be negative about yeah. it, which he which, should be. I know. I know. Hello. Hey, real quick, I'm doing a uh, our Chicago podcast, and we were, we were talking about the Bulls, uh, and Eddie yeah. asked me to call you real quick to give us a minute on the Bulls. Here's my big take, and you can assess it. I said I'm not going to take this team seriously till they trade Zach Levine because it makes no sense for Zach Levine to be on this team anymore. Yeah, the problem is nobody wants Zach Levine. Yeah. I mean, his contract's terrible. Um, you know, he's, he's like a big empty calorie sack guy. I, I don't – and, you know, like watching him, especially when DeRozan was just a better option to close, like you could see his pissiness. Mm-hmm. And then if like DeRozan didn't score, I always felt like, you know, Levine would be like, okay, well now it's my turn. And it wasn't so much about the look. It was just that he felt like it was his turn. So they have a lot of guards. There's a few guys I like, but they're, they're really stuck. I mean, they're really yes. stuck. <laughs> they're really. I said that like Zach Levine just makes no sense on this team. If you're trying to go a youth movement, he cannot be on this team. And Vooch too, but 
I, you're going to have to send picks for both of them. Here's here's what you're you're praying for. Is that Zach's healthy? Yes. He puts some some stats. It doesn't mean anything other than LeBron with the first rounders that the Lakers have because he's going to be insufferable about them trading those picks for anybody. And depending on like who's available and the market's usually a little thinner now, like Levine will be available. It is a trade 10 out of 10 times you cannot make. And LeBron loves Levine. Like when I talked with those guys back in the day, like he, Levine was somebody LeBron like really liked. And I'd be like, why? And then they like, oh, that was the <laughs> asshole. So um, my, my hope if I'm a Bulls fan, because I mean, I'm mean, obviously – you know how I am about my Chicago team. You're a Caleb just, guy. Russell's a Caleb guy. Oh, he's, front nice. line, he's a front lines Caleb good. guy. Love that. Good. Yeah. Front liner. Like, like Matthew Broderick and Glory when the guys are <laughs> first. Yeah. And no, that's, r- that's what I am. So, yeah. yeah. Russell will text me like during Bears games and be like, it's bullshit that people are saying this about our guy. And I'm like, fuck yeah, it is. <laughs> but okay. So, yeah, so I the know, Lakers. I know. So, you, your, hope, your hope is, is that available options are so thin. And let's face it, like, you can sit there and pretend the Lakers aren't going to just do whatever LeBron wants to do. They're still already doing it. So, you know, and he's going to get really weird and passive aggressive and tweet. So if Levine is healthy and putting up numbers and there aren't any other options, I could see the Lakers just being like, ah, you know what, like a flyer on Levine. Yeah. It's because LeBron and that group really like him. Okay. For whatever reason. So All right. That's your hope. That's so, your hope. so root for the Lakers to have no shooting, for Levine to be healthy, and then maybe whip up some photoshops of Zach in in the Lakers jerseys. Yeah, like a new big three, and where it's LeBron, <laughs> Bronny, and. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Do you guys have any questions? No, that's it. I, yeah. I'm happy to hear the bright side because I listened to the over under pod, and you couldn't have been more disgusted with the Chicago Bulls. Yeah, they're disgusting. Yeah. With Chicago, I don't know. Did you hear the, the Toronto segment? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I will never, for the life of me, I will never understand that fan base. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like whenever you're critical of like a WNBA storyline, you're like, oh, you're only doing that because. It's like, yeah, right, because I've gone 20 plus years being critical free of all the male athletes. Yeah. And, um, you know, when you do it to Toronto, it like turns into this international incident. And you're just like, dude, your own center said we're probably going to suck this year. (laughs) What am I supposed to do? Like, say they're sneaky good? And, you know, I just think when you're you're nine figures into Bruce Brown, R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, even if I sort of like all three guys, like, just look around the league and say – all right, who are we paying top three money to? Although Chicago would probably be a finalist in that. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. How much are these three guys making? And by the way, like I'm convinced the Bulls signed Patrick Williams to an extension because of a rumor Sam Presti liked him. Oh, <laughs> that sounds like something that would happen to us. Yes. Um. All right. So w- w- hammer the under. Uh, I think it's an under because I-, I actually felt pretty good about that under because I just. Even if they outperform whatever, like, there's a log jam of all this stuff. You know, there's a couple guys you still would kind of like. They've got, like, six guards that I think are rotational guards, if healthy. Um, and I uh, I don't know, man. I just don't – like, what would be the point going wire to wire with that team yeah. other than the fact that Ryan Zverev owns them? You know, yes. Like, that's the problem. Man. That's it. That's it. Like, you, that's it. Yeah, got, he, would, he would love to – his favorite right. thing is to be uh, in a playoff seeding position with three weeks left in the season. They're never going to trade him because they're launching that new TV network. Yeah, that's, yeah, and we can't yeah. even watch him. You know that, right? Honestly, like a topic that we've been thinking about, the Bulls '90s run is it the flukiest championship run <laughs> of the franchise based on who they actually R- are? Reinsdorf is a Jordan merchant. That's a, f- a fact. Yeah. <laughs> and then he got tired of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, that place, I remember like watching a game on a Saturday night where like you guys weren't even that good, and it was just an awesome night. And DeRozan was going nuts, and I think Io was going nuts. And I was just, like, obviously, you know how much I love that city, and I'm just like, this sucks. Yeah, like this is bullshit. Like my favorite playoff series was maybe Philly, New York this year, and I was like rooting for the Knicks, like I grew up there. Um, and I just feel like Chicago's another one of those cities, and it's like, well, I don't know, dude. It's been kind of like 25 years. Yeah. And I remember thinking that, I remember thinking Krause was like 
oh my god he's so smart you're right bird mikhail and Paris did get old and then you're like <laughs> maybe just get old instead maybe just get old instead yeah. oh all right it well tricked me. thank you yeah. ryan appreciate it uh it's gonna be a bad season but we appreciate you uh telling us how bad it's gonna be who do i invoice uh you danny lance our producer i'll send you his number <laughs> All right, sounds good. All right, Thanks, see ya. Bye. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's it. Zach, Zach Levine to the Lakers. Yeah, okay, that's that's all that's we got root for. Yeah. Perfect. But I do think that that will just not happen. Now. No, but yeah. that's that's why I did, from what I said at the start, like I will not take this team seriously yep. until they they get rid of him and Vooch because you just can't you can't do what they're trying to do with some of the young talent and have Zach Levine hogging the ball. Yes. You can't. Thank you for that. that yeah, that was fun. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. I like he'll him. always talk. He usually when, it, when he'll call me and like just it, Max was in the car with me one time and and Russell called me and it was like almost he didn't even say hello. He just like started talking about some sports thing. <laughs> yeah, it was literally just being on a podcast. That's how he. That's how he rolled. Like I like to picture him before he got that call. He's just pacing in his place, yeah, like, thinking, looking about for it. someone. Yeah, who's to calling let off his bulls? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> let's do it. <laughs> that was great. So thank you to him. They get that in the title. Lance or Solo breaks down the bulls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's. I think that's about enough in the bulls. Quickly, we should mention too because I know you got to run, Dan, and we'll probably get it in the Hawks after. Uh, but. While we are there, Reinsdorf's other team, we were recording our snake draft last week and when that news broke that he's open to selling, but yeah. it kind of sounds like it's bullshit. It sounds like it's bullshit. Uh, I wish he would sell the Bulls. He's not going to. Um, yeah, but it, it would be – why not sell it, dude? You're like fucking 88 years old. He dude. paid like $20 million for it. Team sucks. 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. I just Cash don't, out. I don't understand any of it. I, I was saying the only good – the only way I could spin it because I am an eternal optimist is he sells the White Sox and then he's like, oh shit, I didn't realize I had that much money and then starts spending it on the Bulls, but we, that's not going to happen. That won't happen. No, no, it won't. So yeah. Yeah, from everything, it seems like he played the he did the same move with Tampa in the 90s. Yeah. So he's mm -hmm. doing that, just posturing for the stadium. Yeah, he's, he's going to Nashville. It. Yeah, right. So it was uh, very mean of him to once again get all of White Sox fans hopes up for even if it was for a brief 10 minutes before they realized what was happening yeah he's just yeah. playing he's he's just playing the same same song every single time he's a piece of shit and it sucks that he owns two teams he yeah. owns half the teams in the city but, and he owns our sports network which chief has been very vocal on yeah yep. and it's a joke i've i thought they would have figured it out by now the, and the, did you see they i i got an email i uh being like big announcement and it was just molly and ha are going to be simulcasting oh, yeah. now that was they. They literally sent out like a press release this morning. Oh. They're like Molly and Ha going to be simulcast on, like, on the new network, and it said big announcement. It, yeah, oh, I gotta find no. It, it, did, it was it, something they like tweet, that. they tweeted out too. Uh, poor Molly and Ha for them to do. Yeah, that. I know <laughs> that sucks for them. Those guys are nice guys. Yeah, they that didn't fucking ask for that. Sucks. Yeah, they didn't ask for that. Oh, They're man. probably just try yeah. To find it. <laughs> we have uh, seven to nine a.m. every day. That's what it says. Simulcast. Also. Hello Fresh, make this fall the tastiest season yet with farm fresh produce and easy autumn inspired recipes delivered right to your door with Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh delivers all the pre portioned ingredients you'll need to make easy homemade meals, all the proteins, veggies, sauces, spices, and more in your box, along with simple instructions that walk you through each step in the cooking process. Whip up tasty restaurant style meals in your own kitchen without the high price tag of takeout and in less time than it takes to get grocery to get delivery excuse me hello fresh has tons of options whether you're craving uh you know they have over 50 recipes each way each week plus take your pick over 100 market add-on items like dessert breakfast and snacks we love hello fresh oh yeah it takes the, the hardest parts of shopping and cooking and it makes it easy oh it, it, and it's like fresh you can rely on it it removes a step it's cost effective it hello fresh is fantastic it's the move so get 10 free meals at hellofresh.com slash free the mid applied across seven boxes new subscribers only varies by plan that's 10 free hello fresh meals just by going to hellofresh.com slash free the I'm, mid i'm doing this go do it yeah free the mid hellofresh.com 10 free meals go do it do they have a Lance, I know we have a couple of voicemails. Do we want to do Hawks when Dan leaves, or do we want to do voicemails? Yeah, we can do the Hawks yeah. in like thirty seconds. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah it, was, it just was all caps. Chicago Sports Network announces simulcast Chicago's top morning sports radio show, Molly and Ha, for immediate release Monday, October twenty first. Like, but I saw 
like announces and i was just like oh shit and nope then, nope <laughs> nope <laughs> then let's do the voicemails now then lance please uh long time listener first time caller i uh, wanted to see what is your favorite section to sit in in any of the chicago stadiums arenas anything <clears throat> i gotta go with united center section 121 i think it's the perfect view whether you're talking a bulls game or a hawks game let me know what you think chief yeah i like the corners for hockey so i'll go 119 uh for the united center i mean the answer is bleachers yeah, but you, you grew don't out like of the that. Bleachers? You grew out of it. I did, but that was more. I would still have bleachers season tickets if I didn't do this job. If I was just a regular person, yeah. I would okay. still have those. Yeah. And yeah. My only thing with bleachers is that it's it's first come first serve, and it turns into a zoo. So you got to be there early. I I kind of like where your cup seats are actually. Yeah, those are really nice. Those seats. are that's I always like. I always sit on that. Uh, first baseline. Yeah, right behind the uh, visiting dugout is is very nice. You yep. can kind of see the whole stadium because, like, if you get there's get the weird sunsets. angles in in Wrigley where yeah. you know you can if you're like too close to the wall and like down the right field line you can only you can't really see. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, those are pretty good. And yeah, that's all that I, that's in the sun on purpose. I was like, I want to be in. The yeah, sun. same. You're yeah. also more responsible than you give yourself credit for. Cause I remember the one time we had to go to the bleachers. You're like, we got to go early. Cause we need to sit in the back where we have a back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Got to have that. Oh yeah. You have wanna, everything in front of you. Yes. You don't want to be crunched mm-hmm. and it's such the, the bleachers. It's such a rookie move to run and get that first seat. Yeah. You're, you're looking over the wall. It's higher than you realize. Yep. Um, I would say 200 level, no specific section for the Blackhawks. Yeah. Those are all good. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then I'd say, um, I like to be up high in, in for football games. I like to be like three hundred level, fifty yard line for for football. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, little coaches cam view kind of. Yeah. yeah, obviously whatever that club. I don't know what club sponsors it now, but the the, the old United. Club yeah, the old United club was great because Cadillac it's also club. your. Yeah, you got an awning too. Yeah, which is which is crucial. On and you side. can go you can go straight to your parking. Yes, the, uh, that's you can if you time it right, you can be out like on Lakeshore Drive in like four minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then obviously anywhere. And Wrigley, I like behind. Like, like yeah. a 123. Yeah. Yeah. Good um, yeah, good question. Another one, Lance? Hey, what's going on, fellas? Brian Storff has me on the roof right now. <laughs> trying to figure out this new antenna business. I'm cold. It's windy. And I'm scared. Some squirrel <laughs> keeps looking at me. That's what I do for my black hawks. I ride with them. I fly with them. And I... Wait. What is that squirrel doing? Put that down. Oh, oh, ah! Okay. <laughs> All right. Don't uh, get hurt little, going little, on the roof. Well, that was like a little Second City skit, right? Yeah. There. No, one, no one get hurt going on the yeah. roof. I want, like, obviously that guy was playing around, but I, there was definitely someone that went up to the roof there. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Oh yeah, there's been, there's definitely been some roof action. Yeah. <laughs> so that someone suggested that to me because it doesn't work in my apartment. They're like, why don't you just go up and like hang it outside your window? And sure, like, dude. Like, no. I'll, sure. Yeah. It's not bullshit. doing it. It's bullshit. Hey, uh, Lance. Definitely uh, use this one versus the first one. I was uh, walking the dog earlier, so I was a little out of breath. But this is Charlie from San Diego calling in. I love the show. Uh, diehard Bart, uh, Bears fan. Been listening for as long as I can remember. Um, but hope you guys enjoyed the bye week. I really enjoyed the bye week, being able to kind of just, like, you know, scout out the composition, be able to watch some other teams really enjoy football for what it is instead of just stressing out about if Caleb Williams is about to get his head taken off. But, uh, yeah, I was watching basically the NFC Championship game, in my opinion, the Vikings versus the Lions, and I was kind of wondering, like, now that we're actually, like, somewhat in the playoff hunt, who uh, who are you guys afraid to actually face? The Lions are scary to me. Uh, Jameer Gibbs is very, very scary. Him and Monty, that running game is uh, probably the best in the business, so... I'm kind of scared about them, but I was just wondering what you guys are thinking about, if you guys are watching any other games or anything. But love the show. Love you guys. Uh, White Sox today, you make me laugh out aloud every single day at work. So I just appreciate you for, you know, bringing some light in my life. I appreciate you guys for all you do. Uh, have a good one. Stay beautiful. Hey, that was nice. I like that. Stay That's beautiful. Nice. Stay beautiful. Yeah. It's good. Stay beautiful. I don't want to think about, would you say playoffs? Well, who, like, who which team scares, scares you the you? most? All of them. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, in the NFC North. Obviously, Packers are the bad, the bad, the bad guys. Yeah, yeah that's. But I, I think I would nice. like our chances versus them better. But we've the played Lions. the Lions tough. I know, well, but that Jamison Williams, like they just. They can stretch it vertically. They can pound the rock. They can, you know, they just have no, so No, yeah, much. They're, they're a disaster to play. Here's the thing with the Lions, yes. Jameer Gibbs. That line Allen, is so Very good. scary. I'm in Ross Brown. Jameson Williams, like I said, but, and he is a friend of the program, but Jared Goff. He's playing lights out. He's playing lights out, but he always Outdoors, has those yeah. games. He always has those games. I would say, though, uh, the scary, like, I think our defense can handle – not handle any team, but they can hold their like weight up against any team. The Vikings and the Packers both have very good defenses. Yeah, the Packers defense is very good. The Vikings is awesome yeah. too. Yeah, so I, that like that would guys. scare like, They don't miss more. Daniel Hunter at all. Oh, right, Brian right. Flores is like I, I yeah. never thought that guy would ever get another job, but he yeah might yeah. coach himself into another yeah he head might coaching yeah. job yeah. So he has been awesome for them. So, but yeah, I'm scared of everyone. Yeah. That's just a fact. That's a fact. All right, I got to run. All right. All right. All right, boys. All right. Uh, I'm excited for Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, so, me too. Let's go. Me Hopefully too. he plays. Please trade Zach Levine. <laughs> God damn it, please trade him. All right. There we go. All right, Big Cat's running. We're going to keep uh, rolling here a little bit, and we're going to close out this show. Was there one more, Lance? Yeah, we've actually we've actually got two. One of them's really short. All right, um, cool. Let's play them out. Our first one here, we've got a, a Lady Bears fan calling in. Oh, let's go. Hey, boys. This is a Lady Bears fan, a Lady AWL. I enjoy the contact that comes from the Chicago boys, White Sox Sox Dave, Eddie and Chief. I just wanted to share this thought that I am so sick and tired of the Caleb Williams versus Jaden Daniels debate, and it seems like this is going to be a debate that goes on for possibly their entire career, or maybe not. Depends how the future turns out, but for right now, the discourse is just insane, pitting the two QBs against each other, and I really do think it came from the initial overreactions of the first two weeks of the season, but I really did think, or I do think that our team has a good chance of beating the uh, the Washington Commanders on Sunday. Our defense is good. Our offense is looking better. As long as we can stop the run game against Washington, we should be great because Washington doesn't have a great defense. But the discourse is getting really tiring between the two quarterbacks. But we'll see. Go Bears. Love you guys. Yeah, listen, thanks for leaving that voicemail, Lady Bear fan. Does she ever give her name or just Lady Bear fan? She did not. She just Lady, Lady Bears. Bears. She's just Lady Bears. Uh I get it, but I think any time you have one, two, they're going to be pinned against Totally, each other. and they both started hot. They both started, yeah. which is not always a given. So, yeah, it, it's – and they're they're so exciting, it's, and they're kind of similar. You know, like they're both mobile. They both – you know, it's the Heisman – two Heisman Trophy winners. They're, it's like yeah, ma- both, Magic and Bird. You both know? franchise star yeah, quarterback-wise. Totally. Like, Good markets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of – things to zero in on mm-hmm. besides like oh caleb this week Jaden yeah. this week but uh, it's i don't think anybody got anything wrong so it's it's not, it'd be one thing if you were the team that drafted mitch trubisky and then mahomes went later i don't think that's this situation it's just like two teams got very good quarterback yeah exactly like of course Jaden daniels six seven for them games into the season yeah has looked better like overall but that doesn't, that's not taking anything away from caleb that's just an exclamation point for how good Daniels has been. I'm but not even no one's in that that narrative, but I don't want to play this game. Uh, for, fine, yeah. but listen, in a, in a vacuum, that's just the facts, right? But I don't think anyone in Chicago or anyone who yeah. But it's like if you if you is really worried. It's it, it's a different story yeah. if they go if if uh, Drake May or someone behind them is lighting it up. Totally, but yeah, that's just the way it is. Lance, last one. Yeah, this one is a, a short one, not not even necessarily sports related. Tits or ass? He just said tits or ass. Oh, I've always been a tits guy. I prefer the uh, so the backside. You and me are different. Yeah, we are. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, and I, th- I, I listen. White Sox Dave's not here, but I could write in his vote. He's I a will tits tell guy. You, he will say tits. Yep. Should I text Dan? And be like tits or ass. <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> See what he says. <laughs> All right, you don't want to know? 
I think he would say ass. Oh, all right. Mm. Well, we'll tease that for next week. All right. We'll roll it over. Next week, if Dan is yeah. our ass. Yep. Um, all right. So I said we would leave the uh, Blackhawks talk for the end. So Yeah. You want to hear it? Yeah, here we are. All right. So I'll, I'll, it's, I'm so mad at them that I can't even like stomach it because of this, the whole TV situation. I do think they're much better than last year. They've looked pretty good in the games that I've seen. They look more structured. They look like an NHL team. I uh, did not see even a second of the Buffalo game I was out uh, hunting, but – they they look competent. They're not good. They're they're miles off from being good. I am starting to have some dark thoughts about the rebuild and what the ceiling is because more and more I'm starting to think that Connor Bedard is not a natural center, that he would be more effective, and that's not even necessarily a slight. He can move off to the wing and be Nikita Kucherov and win you know the MVP and scoring titles and, and help win a Stanley Cup. But if he's not a center, and then Frank Nazar and Oliver Moore are the other two guys that they've drafted, to they were drafted as centers, they're probably wings as well. Well, then all of a sudden you don't have any centers in the pipeline. So that is a scary thought. And then my other scary thought is Kevin Korchinski. He's going to spend the vast majority of the year in the AHL. He has clear, obvious talents as a defenseman. He looks oftentimes completely lost defensively. So that to me sounds a lot like Eric Gustafson. And if you spent a seventh overall pick on a guy that is like a top five, I hate him, former Blackhawk and Eric Gustafson, that's tough too. So I think the Levshinov pick, that's, I think that was a factor. Like we need a definite uh, like two-way top four defenseman. So Levshinov, Vlasic, hopefully Renzel. They've got, they've got bodies back there, but they got to figure out what's going on in that center ice position for the rebuild, and hopefully we figure that out this year. I would love it if Bedard cements himself as a guy who can win draws, be effective in his own zone, and still be like a dynamic you know, 120-point guy, uh, but we haven't seen that yet. So that's something I'm looking for. Is he bad at face-offs? Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. And it's not like... You'd rather win him than lose him, but losing him is not the end of the, at the end of the... It's not the worst thing in the world because you still like the puck changes possession so often, but you'd rather start with it than chase it. And if you're having a big face off in your own, like if you're at the end of a game and you want your best player on the ice and the face off is in your end, he can't take it. So that's not like a great situation. That's a problem. That that's a problem. Like it's that. a problem. So, and same thing if you're, you know, if he's your number one center and so he's going to be the on your top power play unit and you're in the offensive end, well, he can't win you a face off. So you have to bring in somebody else who might not be like the ideal choice, but he, you know, like a Jason Dickinson or somebody like that to win the draw. And, and then what, then you put Dickinson where, or you try to get him off as immediately. So there's like, something you can get better at though. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So the Hawks employ a guy as a consultant, you know, a hockey development guy named Yannick Perot who played with the Hawks. He's one of the best defense uh, face off guys of all time. And, you know, Taves worked with him. Taves was obviously one of the best guys in the league at it. So you you can definitely get better at it. But some of it sometimes comes down to stature and strength and quick, yeah. you know. Quick so, twitch. Quick twitch. And also just being like, hey, it's like we're battling for it and it's in our feet. And the guy who's 6'4 is going to beat the guy who's 5'9. That's mm -hmm. just the way it is. So, um, so well, it's not like doom and gloom on that front. But it's like these are questions that – you know, I hope Kyle Davidson is thinking about because they're going to have another top five pick. Yeah, because if I'm forming an argument here, like you said, if they have another top five pick, they could address it there. Or obviously, cap wise, they're flush. Yeah, they get, but like those those types of top six centers just don't become available. Mm -hmm. So like the only time in recent memory where a guy left would be John Tavares, like a superstar guy, and, and that went, was. Yeah. Different circumstances he wanted. He to wanted home. to go home. Yeah. So look, they do have money. Chicago is a great place to play. I think people want to play, uh, play for play with Bedard. There are they are kind of getting a reputation. If you talk to players, that the culture here is not what it what you would want. That's that's the thing that's openly talked about. That I've talked to other players at other teams about. So hopefully they get that corrected too. Uh, but uh, you know, I I am starting I. I, I've always been guarded against because I think people thought we got Bedard and we'll just run back the last dynasty like we're going to win three more cups. 
I, I that seems impossible to me. I would I would love to get one with this group, but they they have a long way to go before they're before they're there. So you want to see develop. You got to see a lot of development from Bedard this year, and then beyond that, you know they they still probably need ten di- ten different guys to fill out the roster. That feels like a lot. It's a lot. It can be done, but if yeah, but yeah, it feels like a lot. Mm-hmm. So, all right then. Uh, four games in, your stance has not changed. They are not a playoff team. Definitely not. And definitely not a playoff team. Maybe a little better than last year. Twenty points better, but yeah. still a bottom five team in the league. Okay. Yeah. All right then. We're also going to be in the building tomorrow night. So. Yeah, we're uh, way up in the sky deck. So yeah. I, I like that vantage point to that other question earlier. Being up way up top for hockey is kind of cool. It sucks for basketball. Yeah. It's like the worst for basketball. For hockey, it's cool. Mm-hmm. It's so bad for basketball. You man. can't see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember I watched a uh, Big Ten tournament game from one of those up there one time, and I'm just like. Pfft. You need like a cosmic bowling ball type <laughs> yeah. basketball yeah. to see. Yeah, like, even like when they're hitting, when they're shooting foul shots, you're like, I don't know if that went in. Did that yeah. go in? Yeah. Did we change the color of the yeah. net. It's yeah. too white. <laughs> we need to be like highlight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we'll be there. Come uh, uh, if you see us around, say hello. And, um, yeah, we'll be part of the uh, 19,000 strong. It won't be that many people in the building on a Tuesday night. They didn't sell out opening night, so say what you want about the old regime, but they had like a 12-year-long sellout streak that has been snapped. So, And I said this to you before, too. My whole, like, adult life, or even going back further, the capacity for the Blackhawks when they didn't have the bars in the corners of 300 level was over 22,000. Then they added those bars and it became 21. When they announced like they didn't sell out, they announced what a sellout would be. It was like 19375 or something like that. So it's like somehow the the total attendance capable at the United Center has dropped from br- dropped below 20,000. So I don't know what that means if they've done construction or added things or taken seats out or what or if it's just they're fudging the numbers. So everyone fudges numbers though. And they fudged the numbers for that sellout streak for sure. Like the tickets were sold, but people weren't showing up. Yeah, yeah, the team was. That's just team. this team has sucked for so long. It's crazy how long they've sucked. Do you remember? Like they fired Stan uh, um, Joel Quenville in November November sixth of twenty eighteen. Dude, it's that whole building. Like I thought about it. It's awful. I thought about it yesterday. It, how it, I? Who wants to watch this fucking channel? Every team on there is terrible. Who fucking cares yeah. that they get on cable? Yeah. Fuck this town. Yeah, I thought about it. Not fuck this town. But fuck the teams in this town. They can, except for Caleb and the Bears. Everyone else can go fuck off. <laughs> I I am so tired of oh like it's not our fault. Is this guy? And then we had this challenge. Fucking figure it out. Get the games on TV. Be competitive. You got all the money in the world. You, p- Jerry Reinsdorf ended the Bulls early. The Blackhawks ended their dynasty early, like by choice or by incompetence. And it's like enough. Just it, how hard? Like there are teams that make the playoffs for twenty straight years. The LA Kings have completely rebuilt their team in the time of the Blackhawks are still rebuilding. Like the Bruins have never never got bad. The Penguins, Sidney Crosby, God bless him, just signed an extension for eight point seven million again. Okay, so he's only ever been paid other than his rookie deal, 8.7. They're still pretty good. You know, they've, they've missed the playoffs once or twice, but they're always in the mix. They've won three Stanley Cups, too. They've never been bad. They kept their stars. Our teams are mismanaged always, and I'm so fucking tired of it. Like, I'm trying not to be negative and complain about this situation, but I'm, I'm like, fed up, and I don't want to hear, like, all the stories you hear about how toxic the Blackhawks are behind the scenes. And they don't get any shit for it, and they should. They suck, and I just want them to be competent and on TV, and 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 that's it. That's all I got. Fuck them. Go off. Well said, and we will end on that because that was so good. Um, I've actually got some breaking news. What do we have? Six minutes ago, Ian Rappaport says uh, from Coach Dan Quinn, Jane Daniels is officially week to week. We're hopeful he can play is the quote. But there are real unknowns, and they'll be cautious. Safe to say the showdown between Daniels and Caleb Williams is in doubt. Damn, that sucks. That does suck. Well, we'll see. Maybe he feels better. Obviously, the day after the game, he's probably going to feel the worst. So yeah, maybe Wednesday comes around. He's like, yeah, you know what? A little bit better than I Shoot thought it'd it up be. With something. Yes, exactly. So uh, we'll see. Uh, good rant to end there. Uh, hopefully, Dave feels better next week. 
And um, yeah, that's all we got, everybody. Uh, that's that, that's our episode. So thank you to Ryan Rosello again. Thank you to Danny Lance. We'll see you guys on Friday for our interview episode. Go listen to last Friday's with Cole one more time. And uh, yeah, that's it. See you guys.